Hey folks, welcome back to Other M. We are here in the Pyrosphere, chasing after little birdie because he is still wreaking havoc up in here. And we just saw a cutscene that gave us some vital information uh, as to what happened in Samus and Adam's past that caused this awkward relationship that they have now. Um, there was an incident while Samus was still under Adam's official uh, leadership uh, when Ian Malkovich, Adam's little brother, uh, needed to repair a part of a ship that was in tow of a ship, and uh, it went critical, which means it goes boom, uh, and Samus wanted to go save him uh, in the short time between the, ex like, the, the alert and the explosion, and Adam made the executive decision, no, shut off that section of the ship, cause it to explode, and, and save the rest of the ship and the rest of the people, Samus, don't endanger yourself. And Samus felt bad about it because it was a decision that nobody should have to make. And she was just making it harder for Adam. But the issue I have with that scene is that there's actually no consequence for Samus's insubordination. Because she never actually does anything. When, when you open up the game, you think, oh, Samus did something wrong and now she feels bad. Samus asked a question that she shouldn't have, and Adam stuck to the, deci the decision that he made. Nothing changed because of her insubordination, and because nothing changed, there was no action, and characters are defined by action. It's just Plus, they also made Adam look like a total dick in that scene. I mean, they even had his, his uh, visor shadowing over his eyes to make him look bad. Like... It was supposed to be sympathetic to Samus, not to Adam, the way that scene was shot. But anyway, moving on, we have a boss fight. Yes, it's that fish guy. You remember him from when we first entered the Pyrosphere? He tried to eat us. And then, and then he tried to eat us again. And now we can finally take care of him by shooting those giant weak spots on his belly. Now this is actually a pretty interesting fight, I think. I, I like the whole thing that he can really come up from anywhere, uh, and, and you have to be ready to shoot him from anywhere. And then you also have, mo have to move from platform to platform using the grapple beam. Speaking of the grapple beam, let's go fishing. The best way to deal damage to him is to fish him out with a grapple beam and then shoot missiles at his belly like that. As you can see, it's not extremely quick, but it is definitely a lot more reliable um, than attempting to shoot like that. Anyway, this guy likes to flop around, he likes to shoot fireballs at you. Or, or maybe they're just like splashes of lava, I don't really know. As you can see, um, so, like, I think, like, shooting a charge beam into his mouth or something will cause him to be knocked back and then he shoots belly like that. Um, or you can grapple onto him and put him onto the land and attack him that way. Usually, since you'll have the charge beam already charging, like, my, my instinct will be to let go and, and shoot him in the mouth. Um, but, you know, it can be a little crafty. Now, if there is a quicker way to take care of this guy, I'm not too familiar with it, unfortunately. And he, the, the, the time windows for, for his vulnerabilities are actually pretty pretty tight, as you saw. Like, you have to see, oh, he's vulnerable. Get into position right now. Otherwise, he will close his mouth. It'll be, like, a split second too late. Also, keep in mind that when he falls down onto the ground, he can hurt you. I, I think I did actually die at one point due to him falling on me when I was the one who fished him up. Yeah, I got a little shot on him there. It can be useful to kind of stay out the peripheries of the of the platforms, because then your missiles won't take as long to get over there. There's basically everything that we fire will be closer and, and take less time. 
But then you're also running the risk of jumping into lava or something. Anyway, as you can see, uh, he like swallowed the grapple beam or something, so it's not uh, available to grapple anymore. So, let's do things the stylish way. He will do a, a mad rush once in a while, and that is your best opportunity to get some shots in on him. I don't know how he moves around so quick. And defeating him somehow lowers the, the lava level. I, I, I guess that the the space station has some sort of computer programming to detect whether or not there are any inhabitants in the lava pool and will adjust the level accordingly. I that's the best explanation I think can think of. Samus, it looks like that monster is headed to the geothermal electric power generator. Track it and put an end to it. I'm so violent, Adam. Ah, uh, but yes, we are, are still following Little Birdie. It, it's true. That's what's happening. Gravel over there. I'm sure that there's some sort of pitfall or, or danger. Uh, that would attack you if, if you tried to not grapple over there. Anyway, here we got a nice big room that's kind of a puzzle of sorts. We've got this grapple beam point, right? But it's not in a position that allows us to actually do anything. So we need to go over here and shoot the crane into a better position. You side hoppers can just go do what side hoppers do. I don't even want to deal with you. And there are also sandworms and all sorts of other things. It's kind of weird. It's like this seems sort of like another subterranean or or like something around those lines kind of area, kind of like the one in in the biosphere. But this one's with sand. Anyway, once that's in position, you can jump on over and deactivate this. And there's our ticket out of here. And our best way to get over there is to um, use a shine spark. I'm not sure if you're... S you're probably supposed to reposition the grapple point again uh, so that you can just swing on over there. But come on, shine spark, guys. Come on, shine spark, past self. Come on. Yeah, the thing about this room, as you can see, the terrain is uneven, but since the way it like slopes and slides and, and smooth. You still have the capability. Oh god damn it. Fucking Iblis worm. Okay, that's taken care of. Now let's get this goddamn shine spark. You see, you see how cool that was? It was so cool. It'd be way cooler than just grappling. Grappling's for losers. Anyway, in here we have the desert refinery where we refine deserts or something. I assume it's some sort of like sand processing plant to make sure it's all pure and, and nice and, and nutritious for, for the wildlife. Or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know about deserts. Anyway, tons of enemies here, but I highly recommend just ignore them. Oh, you dicks. Again, just ignore them. They, they're just looking for attention.
And it's the return of these rotating cylinder things that I'm not so much a fan of. I wish I were a fan of them. I, I like the idea of rotating cylinders. It's just... don't really like their execution. Thrilling, I know. Alright, activate this terminal and unlock that door over there. I don't know, it's, it's nice that it isn't just a long linear corridor. It's making you moving around and, like, traverse across the room a couple different ways uh, in, order to act to, in order to actually get through when there's some actual, like, vertical platforming. Whoopsie. It's more than just holding forward. There we go. Now through here we have a uh, neat little... I don't know, I, I like this gauntlet. It's kind of a, a circular... I mean, I don't, I don't know what it's actually used for in, in like, in-universe. I want to call it a runway, but it's probably not. Um, just a, a circular, like, pathway uh, that goes around this this large containment vessel or, or facility or something. Basically, a way of, of traversing the, the area uh, from the outside rather than the inside. Anyway, of course, because it's, like, poorly designed, we need to use the Shine Spark. I think there might be the remnants of a ladder there? No, no, there aren't. I, I, I guess scientists came equipped with speed boosters and morph balls as well. But it's like, you know, it's, it's having this, this machinery, this rigging, these, these wires, uh, it makes it feel more like it's some sort of construction site. Anyway, let's do it again. See, there's a ladder. We can't use ladders, but at least that makes sense. Like, at least it makes sense to have ladders for scientists who, who cannot jump, like, six feet vertical feet. Anyway, through here. We're done with that. Hey, look, it's this guy. I am sick of this guy. Luckily, this is actually the last time we'll deal with him. Um, but this is also definitely the most difficult encounter with him. He's flying around, he's shooting missiles. It's dangerous. The, your best option uh, is to quick dodge out of the way while charging beam uh, when he flies at you, and then let loose the beam uh, while he's kind of stopping, slowing down. And eventually that, that will do damage to him, and he, he will do his, his suck-up red thing. But again, I, I do not know of a reliable way to trigger that attack. And it is the only way to actually permanently damage him. As you can see, he doesn't have a health bar. Hey, yeah, you gonna do it? Yeah, you can do it. Alright. And now let's do it again. Really, a lot of this fight is quick dodge, have fun. I mean, it's not even, like, creative quick dodging, like I remember when I said with the uh, big yellow machinery fight with, with the deleter. That was cool quick dodging. This is not cool quick dodging. Oh, and I, I guess he was sucking things up while in midair, so keep an eye on him. I'd completely forgotten that he did that. And here, down we go. Hopefully to the geothermal electrical generator plant machine factory. Hey, look, it's that guy. I don't care about him. 
And since I'm kind of obligated to complain about this, were scientists equipped with grapple beams so that they could traverse over lava? Was that a thing? Was, was that how it was, the place was designed? Like I said, those guys, very dangerous. You, you misunderestimate their powers. Super missile door. Eventually we're gonna get super missiles, I swear to god. Remember how early you got them in, in Super Metroid? And then they, like, slowly became this more mythical thing. Like, it seems like you get them later and later in every game. Maybe I'm crazy. And he'll slip through here. And we're getting closer to Little Birdie. Closer. Always closer. Getting there. Oh, look more lava. Oh, these bricks. I remember this room. These these bricks with the that are like just made of pure lava or whatever that'll swing at you. You would think that they would be really easy to dodge. Like, they have such a huge tell, such a huge wind-up. Um, but I found them actually really, really annoying. They killed me many, many times. Luckily, you can freeze their faces. But still, gosh darn, they... They had their way with me more than I'd like to admit. Anyway, we've been in this room before, I believe, possibly. Um, but now we have the grapple beam, so we can move around in a new way. And this is like an area that I think the coolness of the idea is lost in the transition between uh, first person and, and third person. Is like, hey, you just went on to a completely alternate path and, and like, we're swinging uh, over pits of lava, but because you're just focusing on first person to third person, you get more distracted and you can't really appreciate the, the scale of the environment that you're traversing. Makes me wish I was playing Metroid Prime, basically. Reminds me of Magmore Caverns grappling around there. That was hella cool. Anyway, just a few more long linear corridors, and then we have a very obvious boss fight. Hey, little birdie? Oh no, little birdie, why are you split open? Well, as you can see, little birdie has uh, grown to a new f stage of adulthood yet again. Can look forward to Little Birdie Mark III, full power. Anyway, this little corridor, pretty simple, use the wave beam to shoot the robots that are creating the barriers. Nothing too creative. Nothing too difficult. Thing to do, huh? Let's tear this thing up. Wait, Anthony, leave this one to me. Don't waste your plasma. Oh 
oh god, let's run around in a panic, run around in a panic. I don't know if it's actually possible to get hit by the fire here. I'm pretty sure the monster will intentionally miss. Blast the eruption board to get the magma flowing. Use your super missiles. I wish I had enough time in this fight to explain exactly how much is wrong with the preceding scene. Let me say right now that I really enjoy this fight, it was one of the toughest but one of the most fun in this entire playthrough. The first problem with that scene is the obvious one, that Samus is acting completely out of character. Uh, the history between Samus and Ridley is that Ridley, uh, when Samus was a child, raided the space colony that she lived on and killed everyone she knew and loved. Traumatic event. I'll admit, that, that would not go over well and that would haunt me from years to come. Um, the problem is that since that event, Samus has become a bounty hunter and has killed Ridley no fewer than three times. And if she were going to have this mental breakdown, she would have done it in the original Metroid. But she didn't. And why would she have it now, after killing him several times? The best explanation I can think of is that she's under a lot of mental stress right now with Adam and the baby and this creature that she had maternal feelings for turning out to be her mortal enemy. Unfortunately, all these plot threads are very poorly developed and don't make any goddamn sense. The second major issue that people have with this is that Samus, the original symbol of feminism in gaming, had to be saved by a man. It's certainly something to keep in mind.
wondered if Anthony was conscious as he hit bottom. Unbearable thoughts welled up in me, making me want to get as far away as I could. I regretted not being able to protect him. And I regretted thinking, even for a moment, that he would betray me. Or fail to come to my aid at the expense of his own safety.